Thank you. I hope the, uh, the first part of this lecture, Marketing Milk and Disease, has at least firmly established for you that milk is not necessary for good health, at least cow's milk for human health. Now I'm going to tell you about the real negative aspects of consuming dairy products and buying into the dairy industry's very well-known message, and of course one that's hi highly financed. And I can best characterize this by telling you, got milk, got disease. You know about some of the negative things concerning dairy products, and I want to just review them quickly for you. Let's take a look at the dairy products in terms of their nutritional components. Now, it's a little bit artificial what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this particular food into various, various components. And for me to say, for example, cholesterol in dairy is what causes heart disease is really not the whole story. It's really artificially separating things out. It's not just the fact that uh, dairy products or meat products that we'll talk about some other time. It's not just that the cholesterol causes rotten arteries and heart attacks. So does the saturated fat. And so does the lack of antioxidants. And so does the lack of dietary fiber. It's just the whole food itself. Whereas people do think about these in terms of separate nutrients, but realize that it's really a big picture that I want you to put together at the end when I describe all the individual problems related to dairy or other kinds of foods. You know that uh, dairy products are high calorie. I mean, after all, they're high fat. They're intended to grow a baby cow to an adult cow. And as a result, they're full of calories. And those calories, we know, promote obesity, they promote type 2 diabetes, and they also promote heart disease. We also know that these dairy products are possible promoters of cancer because of their high calorie intake. Extra calories in experimental studies promote cancer. Dairy products are high in fat, which promotes obesity and cancer and diabetes. They're high in a kind of fat that you've always learned to worry about, and that's the saturated kind or the animal kind, and that's the kind that really rots the arteries. Dairy products are high in protein. As a consequence of their high protein intake, which goes along with the high acid. Remember, proteins are made of amino acids. And some of those acids are more acidic than others, like the sulfur-containing amino acids. So dairy products, because they are high in protein, aren't they sold to you because they're high in protein? Well, there's a negative part to that. That high protein, high acid nature of dairy products, what it does is it damages the kidneys, causes kidney overload for processing all that protein. As a matter of fact, the standard classic recommendation from all kidney doctors is if you have failing kidneys, you need to go on a low protein diet to decrease the workload of those kidneys, to decrease the flow through the tubules, to preserve the kidney function so you can stay off a dialysis machine. That extra protein is harmful. As a matter of fact, even in healthy people, people who have no apparent diseases, it's estimated that they lose about a third of their kidney function by the time they get to be 70 years old because of the high protein nature of the American diet. The acid, the acid is what really damages the bones because the bones have to neutralize the acid and dairy products are high in acid. I mentioned to you that hard cheeses are very high in acid and Parmesan cheese is the most acidic food that people commonly consume. Now, how does that fit with the message that you could, should consume dairy products to have strong bones? It's ex exactly the opposite of what the scientific truth is. Dairy products are high in cholesterol, so they promote atherosclerosis, which leads to strokes and heart attacks. They're low in iron. In fact, dairy products have almost no iron in them. When somebody comes to me with a problem of iron deficiency anemia, the first thing I do is I look for a, a cause of iron loss, like blood loss. Are they bleeding from their intestinal tract, or maybe a woman bleeding from her uterus, or other sources of bleeding I would look for. Now, if I ruled that out, then the next thing I would think about, or maybe even in addition to the problem of blood loss, maybe this is compounding the problem, I'd look to whether or not they had a diet high in dairy products, because dairy products has virtually no iron, the calcium and phosphorus in dairy complexes iron from other sources like green beans and beef and forms insoluble complexes so that the iron cannot now get through the intestinal tract into the body. And the third thing that consuming dairy does is it causes bleeding in the intestinal tract. There's a problem called Heiner's syndrome that little babies have. It's the most common cause of iron deficiency anemia. Heiner's syndrome is due to cow's milk. 
for those three reasons that I just told you. These kids end up with having microscopic blood in their stool or actually gross bloody diapers. And you can't stop the anemia until you take the kids off of the dairy products. Every pediatrician, every allergist knows about Heiner's syndrome. You have to think about this in adults too that have anemia problems. Is it about due to all that dairy consumed? Or maybe blood loss in the intestinal tract from the dairy? Or maybe all the fat that's in the dairy, maybe that's causing extra hormones in their system, which is causing extra menstrual flow. A dietary solution is the one you want to look for because that, of course, is something you can easily change. Dairy products have no fiber. And because they have no fiber, they contribute to constipation. But I'm going to carry this discussion of constipation on further because there are other reasons that dairy products cause constipation other than the fact that, like all animal products, dairy products contain no dietary fiber. They're low in carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is what gives you energy. Now, milk has carbohydrate, about 30% of the calories are carbohydrate, but in making cheese, the carbohydrate content is reduced to about 2%. You've heard about runners hitting the wall, running out of energy. Well, what they're basically doing is running out of carbohydrate. So if you want to be active, whether you want to be an athlete, a runner, or you just want to be just an active person, you want to be able to do your housework or your, or your work at your employment, if you want to just be alive and active, you want to have that carbohydrate because that's where your energy comes from. And dairy products fail to supply that carbohydrate, particularly in the area of uh, low carbohydrate dairy products like your cheeses. Dairy products have no vitamin C, which results in poor tissue healing. And if it gets severe enough, low vitamin C, then you get a condition called scurvy. And it results in degenerative diseases because dairy products, the fat that they do have is of the unessential type. Remember we talked about how essential fats come from plant foods. Your omega-3 and your omega-6 fats, they come from plant foods. Well, dairy products are animal products, and as a result, they don't contain many of these essential fats. As a matter of fact, 97% of the fats are the unessential saturated type. So you result in fatty acid deficiency. And there's concern that certain neurologic problems, such as multiple sclerosis, may have their foundation in feeding young kids too many dairy products and also too many other animal products. And as a result, they develop a weakened nervous system because the nervous system is made from these essential fats. And as a result, they develop a nervous system that is later on susceptible to other things, such as autoimmune problems or viruses, dairy products, are sufficient in something that they won't brag about. Dairy products, as a matter of fact, will have lots and lots of something they won't brag about, the dairy industry won't brag about, and that is environmental contaminants like DDT and PCB and heptachlor. The environmental contaminants that get into your body are a consequence of consuming high-fat animal products. These environmental contaminants result in serious problems such as cancer. Breast cancer has been studied by many researchers and published in many scientific journals as to, be, as to have been caused or promoted by these environmental chemicals. They get into you through the food that you consume and particularly the animal products. Parkinson's disease, other kinds of neurologic problems that result in you having difficulty thinking are consequences of these environmental chemicals. As a result, also these environmental chemicals will cause hormone problems in people. Dairy products have something unique that makes them a bit different than animal foods, and that is that their proteins are highly allergenic. You may have heard that the number one cause of food allergy in children as well as adults is dairy products. You may have heard doctors say or mothers come back and tell you that you know that I took my child to a doctor with a runny nose or ear problems or other allergies. The first thing the doctor said is take them off the dairy products. Well, there are other serious allergy type problems that we call autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or type 1 diabetes that also are initiated by the dairy protein which makes them a bit unique than other animal products and also dairy products are full of microbes they're full of organisms that can cause infection let's uh, talk about this microbe thing for just a minute dairy products are pure white but one of the reasons they're white, the dairy industry will not brag about, and that's because part of their whiteness comes from white blood cells. White blood cells are commonly called pus cells. Now I want you to know that the dairy industry, they have rules, and they're conscientious about their products, and they set up a rule back in 1993 that said that a milliliter of milk 
cannot contain more than a qu three quarters of a million pus cells. No more than 750,000 pus cells per cc of milk. A cc is about a thirtieth of an ounce. And I want you to know that the dairy industry, they stick by their rules. As a matter of fact, there was a study recently published where they looked at the milk in New York State and they found on average there were 363,000 pus cells per cc of milk examined. Now those white blood cells, they had to be there for a reason. They had to fight off the nearly 25,000 bacteria that were found in the milk and those bacteria were there to fight off infections that are common in the cows. I love that advertisement that they put out for the dairy industry about the milk mustache. But it's not truth in advertisement. If it was truth in advertisement, they'd have that mustache properly labeled. They'd say this milk mustache, it contains a quarter million pus cells and about 25,000 bacteria. You think you'll find a movie star or other personality carry a must milk mustache with that particular labeling on it? I don't think so. <laughs> dairy products were the most often recalled product, food product, by the FDA between October of 1993 and September of 1998. They were recalled because of contamination with microorganisms such as salmonella, staphylococci, listeria, which can cause abortions and miscarriages, deadly E. coli. E. coli is the bacteria that you often hear contaminating food that will kill children. Also a bacteria called Mycobacterium paratuberculosis, which is believed to be involved in the development of Crohn's disease. 